How are you guys all today? So I thought today we would um, break a page in the journal that I showed you how to make a few days ago or a few videos ago. This little journal's fun. You can set up your pages to be in the shape of a diamond or you can do it in a, in a square traditional form. Uh, you can make it so that each page is, is designed in a different direction. I think it's going to be a really fun book to make. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rip up some paper from <clears throat> this dictionary or encyclopedia that I had. And we're going to just get those all glued on. And what that's going to do is give us some texture in our background. I'm going to use my beacon 3-in-1 and glue things on. No rhyme or reason. Just get it in there, get it glued down. You can use a glue stick, you can use gel medium, whatever, whatever you have that you'd like to use. I'm not worrying too much about making sure all the papers are the right direction. The writing can be upside down, sideways, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me glue everything on. You can see how I'm doing that. So I will be back once I've got everything glued in place. Alright, so I've got that all glued down. Maybe in a little closer here. Everything's adhered down to my page. So now I'm going to use some gesso. I've got Golden's gesso today. And all gesso is basically is a paint primer. And I'm just going to give everything a coat with gesso. It is still see-through. It's not uh, not completely opaque like a like some some paints are. But all I want to do is just um, uh, get a layer of this paint over everything. And the reason why is when I come in with uh, with other layers of paint and sprays and stains and stuff like that, I just um, sometimes the old vintage paper like this uh, encyclopedia paper was uh, will absorb your inks and stains a little bit more than what you would like sometimes so by putting this layer of gesso down and letting that dry it will give um, uh, give a bit of a barrier between that vintage paper and my mediums so as you can see you can still see the words and yeah, I've got bubbles. I'm not worried about that. That's just another layer of texture that'll develop as, as I continue to create my page. So I'm going to let that dry, and once that's dry, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. That's dry. <clears throat> so I think I want to put this image on uh, onto my book. So I'm going to pull some of these pinks and greens. Um, let me just move you in a little bit here. Want to move some of the or pull some of those pinks and greens and uh, neutral color colors into my background. So I'm going to start by mixing up some paint. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of burnt umber. And a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of titanium white so I'm just going to mix mix those two colors together put a little white in there there we go, that's... A 
That's what I'm after, just this nice cream type color. And then I'm going to water that down and turn it into more of a wash. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a little frog in my throat. As I want this to be fairly watered down, I don't want it. There we go. in the water and then oh I forgot a paper towel I'll be right back and then I'm just going to take a paper towel in here and just dab it that's gonna pull up some of the paint and give it some texture mask because I have a really bad habit of sticking my arm in there. I love that texture. Can you see that? That texture in there. Perfect. So I'm going to dry that and I'll be right, right back. I'm back. That's dry. So now I'm going to do some stenciling into the background here. And I like these little raindrops. So I just cut this on my Cricut machine just out of cardstock but if you uh, if you're gentle with your cardstock you can use it over and over again as a <clears throat> as a uh, stencil so I'm just going to put a little bit of pink paint out and I'm using just a makeup sponge and I'm coming in and I'm just being really quite random with which which spots I'm putting that in, not, not worrying about being too too exact. me some pink ones in through there. They kind of remind me a little bit of, of eggs as well. And then the fun thing with a makeup sponge is I come in and I just cut that pink layer right off. I've got a brand new bottom to use. I'm going to come in with some green. Stencil back in. some pink and we've got some green spots in there. Just let that dry and as soon as I've got that dry I'll be right back. All right so I'm back. I'm gonna do a little stamping. I'm gonna use uh, from Impression Obsession 
this script stamp. And so I'm going to ink that up. And like usual, I just put my stamp in, pick up random spots. I don't even worry too much about whether or not I've got the script going the right direction or not. I just like how that pushes. Helps push those raindrops farther into the background. I'm going to give that ink a minute to, to dry. And then I'm going to come in with some some watercolor crayons. And I'm using the Stedler watercolor crayons. And I'm going to bring in, I think, on those on those roses. They're a little bit more on the peach side, not quite so pink. So I'm finding the pink is just a little uh, standing out just a little bit more than I would like. So I'm going to come in with these peach colors and I'm just going to color across the top and down the one side. And because they're a watercolor crayon, I'll just put a little bit of water on my mat. that up with my paintbrush. Can you see how that's just I'm going to start moving that crayon. It's going to let that run and drip. See how I'm getting those drips to start coming down the page? If they're not moving as fast as you want them to, just use your paintbrush and help it along. Maybe even bring in some yellow. Nice. And as your puddles start hitting the bottom of your page, you can use a piece of paper towel or a rag and just absorb any, any puddles that form. It's looking nice now. I think, I think, I think I'm going to come in with just... A little bit of this orange. I'm going to bring that in a little bit more, kind of all over. And that's one of the fun things with the watercolor crayons is that you can and see how that's just pushing that pink a little bit into the the background making it so it's not quite not quite so bright and intense bringing in a little bit more of that peach look and feel that the roses have all right Spray that with the water, let the water run. 
nice. You see how that color is moving? So I'm going to give that a minute to, to dry and set up and I'll be All right, right back. so I'm back. I've got everything dry. I think for the most part I like what's going on in that background. I'm going to take my coffee archival ink and just uh, take my finger dauber and very, very lightly just brush over over the paper and that's going to grab the edges of some of those some of those um, background papers, those encyclopedia papers that we put in there. It's going to darken things up, grunge it up a bit. There, can you see how that's showcasing those paper edges now? I'm going to come in, I'm also going to go around the edge of my page. And this ink does not react with water, so it's going to stay put. There we go. I am loving that. Now I want to get my bird glued in here. Now this was an image that I grabbed from Graphics Fairy, I believe it was, and I printed it out on my printer with um, onto rice paper. And the nice thing with rice paper, of course, is when you get it wet, it will just come apart ever so nicely. So I'll go around my image with some water and rip that image out. If you don't have uh, rice paper, you can always print an image out on tissue paper. Or if you've got a napkin with an image that you really like, you can use a napkin to do this technique. And that just gives you a really nice torn soft edge. And I'm going to go around the outside edge here as well. I just pull that paper off. And the reason why I do this is I just don't want any hard, hard lines or hard edges to the image when I gel medium it into place. There we go. So I've got that done. Now I need a paintbrush. Sorry. So now I'm going to put that on with some gel medium. And I love how it just will fit it onto the side of the page just like that. So I'll grab some gel medium. And we'll brush that on. rips or tears a little bit while you're getting it glued down. Not a big deal. And I go over that image.
And because we've got watercolor crayon in the background, you may find that your gel medium picks up some of that crayon color. And that's, that's fine. You actually want it to pick up a little tint. If you're worried about it tinting your, your whole container of gel medium, then make sure you uh, dispense a little bit of gel medium out onto, a, onto your work surface. There we go. Oh, I've got a corner. There we go. So, when I was adhering it down, it rolled over on itself and made a little bit of a thicker, thicker edge than I want. So I'm just using my brush and pushing, pushing that paper away so that it gets more of a distressed look. There we go. So I'm going to give that a minute to dry and then I'll be back. All right. So that is dry now. I'm going to come back in with my finger dapper and a little of that coffee ink and I'm just going to brush up and around that image just to camouflage that white that white edge a little bit. And my gel medium had a bit of a gloss to it, so I apologize for the the glare, the shine on that now, but I will show you how I'm going to fix that here in a minute. Now, I um, have some of these paper washi tape strips from the uh, shadow shaker card that I made the other day. I'll link that video down below um, that I'm going to use on here as I think I think that will work work quite nicely. So I'm just going to cut that apart. All right. And I'm going to rip it. And I'm going to rip that. And I need one more piece. Just looking to see what I want to put on here for my I like. And of course, you want to vary those those lengths. So I'll put a longer piece, and then bring in the shorter piece. And I think I want more writing. That in, and then. I think I'll go like that. We'll just have those. Maybe. Maybe not quite. This is this is where I sometimes spend more time than uh, 
something that I care to admit uh, is just figuring out how I want to put <clears throat> put my strips, my embellishments on a page. So I have lost my little finger dabber. Just want to come in and make sure you edge. those papers just to make them stand out. Alright, so I'm not going to make you watch me do this. I'll be back when I've got that all uh, edged in here. Alright, so I'm back. I uh, didn't like how glossy that gel medium was drying so I um, went and got my golden gel medium mat and went over the image with that and you can see now that it doesn't have that that glossy glare anymore and you can see the image so much nicer. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the quote that I'm going to put on the page and I just went online, went on my computer and found a bunch of quotes that I liked about flying and uh, I think um, I think I really like this quote. Those who, do, who don't jump will never fly. And I think I'm going to use that bigger font. I printed it out in a larger font size and a smaller font size. And again, I'm just going to use my scissors cut that out. And I think I'm going to put... Alright, so I think I will put it on like this. Those who don't jump will never fly. And we'll move that. Let's see here, let's do that. Let's do those who don't jump will never fly. Yeah, I think I'll put it on like that. And again, I'm just going to ink up those edges so that it gets a frame and it won't be quite so stark against everything. do before I put that on. It wouldn't be a page of mine without some splatter. So I'm going to take my black Demco gesso water that down to an inky consistency. don't want a whole bunch of it like on the bird and flower so I'll just cover that with my fingers but let it fall everywhere else there we go that gives me a nice splatter everywhere and while that's drying Okay, I'm just going to dry those right, spots. Back. Right back. And the spots are dry. Really, really happy with how that's looking. Those who don't jump will never fly. So, I used my Beacon 3 in 1 to glue down my faux tissue tape. And I'll use the same thing to glue down my words. All right. Perfect. 
Perfect. And I've got a black sharpie, fine tip. If you've got a micron pen or anything like that, that should work. And I'm just going to scribble along those outside edges a little bit, just not really being precise, not worrying about straight lines. If you find that it's getting gummed up from the paint, just scribble it off, come back in. I find most of these types of pens don't don't do real real well. And I'm not sure where my black pit pen has gone. And then I'm gonna take my low low Cornell. Sorry about that. Let's see here. My low Cornell watercolor in brown. Uh, actually no, I'm gonna come in with my black. And I'm just gonna come in and go around around these images and around my words here. And a little bit of water, a little bit of water on my brush. And that should just add just a little bit of shadow in around those features. And there we go. That is my page finished. And then I want to sign and date that. Uh, let's see, let's see if my Sharpie will. Ah, what is today? Today is March 2nd. Oh, 0302 of 21. Alright, there we go. Thank you for joining me. Leave your comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned anything or if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on my next adventure. Bye bye. <music>